So changing rainfall, changing temperatures, that means where things live and where things grow, that's changing as well. So where you can grow crops and what crops you can grow easily or successfully uh, is changing. And these things haven't changed for thousands of years. So around the world, we've got very used to growing our grains and raising our sheep and whatever in certain parts of the world. And those parts are perhaps becoming hotter and drier. And some of the other places that used to be not so great for agriculture, you know, think Siberia or, or uh, the north of Canada or up in the mountains in New Zealand, are probably becoming better in some ways for agriculture. So the way the climate's changing means that we have to, to shift what we do, both where we live if we're right by the coast, because the sea level is rising and that means more water and less land ultimately, uh, but also where we where we get our food from. So the kind of crops that we've been used to growing either grow in a different place or new crops are coming in. I know that you can grow bananas in Northland already and I can imagine that growing things like bananas is going to become more of a um, viable option for agriculturalists in New Zealand over the year. So as the climate changes, because it hasn't changed much for thousands of years, Humans have got used to growing food, gathering food in certain parts of the world, and this applies to New Zealand too, obviously, uh, and growing certain crops, raising certain kinds of animals in different places. All of that is changing. So we, we're going to have to rethink how we do agriculture and how we feed ourselves. Uh, and I think one of the most worrying things about climate change is how extreme events are changing. So the amount of moisture in the air, water vapour, uh, is purely a function of temperature. Warmer air means more moisture. So there's the chance, at least, that when it rains, you'll get heavier rain. And that is already happening. Like I was saying, we can already say that some of the big floods in New Zealand have an influence, have a fingerprint of climate change. Uh, but on the flip side of that, the rainfall and the way it falls is becoming spikier. So when it rains, you get this big spike of rainfall, which might cause a flood more easily. But when it's not raining, chances are you'll get a longer dry spell. So the chance of drought is increasing as well, perversely. Generally speaking, the drier places are the places where you see the chance of drought increasing and the wetter places are where you see the chance of flood increasing. But actually, the chances of both are going up in a whole lot of places. So you're starting to see more extremes at either end of the scale, and that is going to make doing successful agriculture, growing crops reliably and so on, harder in a lot of places. Maybe not everywhere, but in a lot of places we'll have to deal with more variability and the amount of rain and when it rains and so on. Plus extreme temperatures. When you get very hot days, um, you know, it's, it can be good news if it's summer and you're going to the beach, but often it's not such good news if you're trying to uh, grow some kind of crop, vegetables in your back garden and it gets too warm and um, the plants just don't like it. So uh, developing crops that are resistant to uh, extreme heat or drought uh, that's quite an important area of research. Uh, and sea level rise. I think it's happening more slowly. Uh, the sea level's rising by a few millimetres every year around the world. But the rate of rise is increasing. So we're going to see bigger sea level rises this century than we saw last century. And it's going to go on for hundreds of years, most likely. Unless, you know, if we stopped all of the emission of the greenhouse gases tomorrow, we might only have another 150 years of sea level rise. If we don't, if we let the concentrations of these gases keep increasing for another 20 or 30 or 40 years, then we will see probably um, a metre of sea level rise over the next century, and we might get to a point where big chunks of ice in Antarctica and Greenland decide to melt, and once they start to melt, it's an irreversible process. Warm water gets in underneath the ice around the edges of the continent and you just can't stop it once that happens. So we might lock in 5 or 10 metres of sea level rise this century unless we take really 
drastic action.